Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. Today's video we're going to talk about how to get chemical effects and water or liquid effects in between some detail areas on your bases. We're going to start with how to actually make a base, especially since Battletech's a little bit more unique in the needs of the miniatures. But this is the ultimate result is we're going to try to get this type of effect on a base with a mech on it. So I've taken some wood uh, hex bases here and I've coated them in PVA. I've added some simple cork. This is a quarter inch cork board you use for like office supply stores and things like that. It's pretty easy to get a hold of. You can get it at hobby supplies as well. And then after the PVA dried over the cork to kind of harden the surface, I've added what's called a water effect or still water effect around the areas where I want the water to be or the lava in this case. You don't necessarily need to use that, it's just a product that I have. You can use things like epoxy putty, you could use filler, you could use drywall spackle. If it's something you wanna shape and, and do or make it look a little bit more interesting or have a little more uh, vertical relief, more than welcome to do that. This is just what I use and I'm gonna show how I use it just because it's the easiest, uh, in my opinion, to do multiples and get a more of a flat surface. Now, like I said, if you want more cracks and crags and things like that, then you'll need something with a little bit more um, consistency to it. So these bases are ready to get primed. This one here, as you can see, is missing the rough texture down here or that, that next level, which is this water effect that I use. This is a Woodland Scenics water effects. I've had this for forever, but I have a big bottle of it, so we're gonna use that. The other thing that helps with this is Secret Weapons Realistic Water. This stuff is great. Even if you don't use this, I recommend getting the realistic water. And it comes in a small bottle, so you don't need to get a whole bunch if you don't need it. I have more of this as well. So uh, again, simple cork base, but the problem is you're probably thinking as well, most miniatures for Battletech have a metal foot plate on them, so they're not really going to go along on a base like this very easily. Well, let's take a look at some of the other ideas and other options that we have here. So here's a couple that I've taken some putty and this metal miniature has the base still in it and then I've taken my filler putty and basically just let a, a little bit of a channel out in the bottom here and that's where my liquid effect or water or whatever I decide to do when I paint this miniature is going to go. This is a plastic miniature that I've removed the bases or the foot off of and I've shown how to do that with using hot water and a razor. But you can see now all I did is I just took my rough textured material and basically just filled, filled it in as the miniature was glued into this recessed hex base. So again, that lives, gives the relief that I can do at the very end of painting this miniature and he'll almost be standing in a low, shallow pool or puddle. The other option would be for miniatures that don't have a full foot base and just one base or on the on one foot that that'll also help you with uh, clearing up areas that you need so figure out if you if the cork might not work for you that might be too high if you need to integrate a foot base the other thing you can do is obviously you can cut some of it off maybe not the direct part underneath the foot so you just kind of work around that it's a little more work but you can still get a nice uh, vertical change so that you can have that water sitting lower or you can always take a dremel and or a saw and you can cut right at the foot line and then you can work your, your way onto something like this. So that is how you can get yourself set up to put a Battletech miniature on a flat, more of a flat base like this. You can use metal ones, you can use wood. I mean, these just happen to be ones I had lying around. So I'm gonna take this water effects and what you need is an old brush. I'm gonna use an old synthetic brush. This is my I do everything I don't wanna do with a good brush brush. You can see it's several colors and it's it's uh, probably about a buck at Hobby Lobby. And then you're gonna need some water. And all I'm gonna do, this stuff comes right out of a, a nozzle, is I'm just gonna start putting this in the areas I want. It's very it's very thick, so uh, much thicker than, than PVA. You may need to kinda squeeze some in and then work it a little bit, and that's what we'll use that brush for. So I'm just stacking it in. It's going to shrink a pretty good amount so don't be uh, worried about getting too much. The other downside of this is it's fairly sticky. You can see it goes to a peak really rapidly. This is meant for if you want to do like rapids or uh, other sorts of like kind of ripples and things like that. So it's it's kind of not as as 
fluid as you would want it to be if you were just doing pools. So that's where that secret weapon water, realistic water comes into play. But take a get a real wet brush. You're gonna keep dipping it in the water. This is gonna help you smooth it out. And now I'm putting in all those little crags and areas. And this is where you can decide if you want to have more of a still water or a flowing type of water. So the the moving water or, or flowing water or lava, if that's what you want it to be. Obviously, if it's lava, you probably don't really care if it's super smooth. Is now you got to kind of work the the surface of it, and you'll see what I mean if you're applying this. You'll you'll understand that you need to find where the little peaks and and uh, drops are, and kind of work that brush on to smooth them out and kind of get it mostly level. The other thing you can do is once you've got most of it kind of where you want it, tap it. You can see now it kind of comes over the edges. You know, it's it's obviously kind of settled in for the most part. Uh, that's a good way to get it mostly level. It's not going to be perfect, but the secret the uh, secret weapon water effects go over that and it actually adds another semi-smoothing layer. Yeah, if you want absolutely perfect still water, don't involve any of this because that does leave a little bit of a uh, surface variation. So I'm just going to work the rest of this in. If you want to get it on the edges here, you can you can do all that. And then at the very end, I'm just going to, you know, you can take a damp paper towel or you can just use your finger on, on a uh, paper towel and just clean it off and go all the way around it. It's pretty simple, but this stuff does take a full 24 hours to dry. You'll, you'll watch it dry and you'll see the first layer start to get less cloudy and you'll be like, oh good, it's dry. And you'll look at it and it's it's gonna stay soft for a very long time. In fact, I think it dries semi-flexible, but you don't wanna go poking around on this or messing around with it once you've got it set. You're gonna have to leave it for quite some time. But again, it, it does a few different things. This is just one way of getting these uh, lower recessed areas where you want that fluid or water effect to be. It's not the only way to do it. I just am showing how to do this because it's it's not a commonly used product, especially for Battletech miniatures. So there we go. So now I've got that kind of settled in. And again, once this starts to dry, it'll, or completely dries, it'll dry completely clear. It'll take primer just fine. That's the other thing too. If this isn't completely dry and you put primer on it, you do run the potential of it cracking. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you do wanna push it into any of these cracks um, to fill there, there, you could get basically little little holes or little air pockets where it pull, it pulls away as it dries. So if it's not contacting something, the surface tens tension will not be there and it'll actually dry and cure. And it'll actually, if there's a little spot where it wasn't attached, it'll leave a little bit of a, of a hole, which you can fill it, it's not a big deal, but you're like, oh man, I just waited a day for this to dry and now I've got you know something I need to fill up which you can fill it with more of this or you can fill it with whatever you want. Uh, another neat effect that you can do with these two is you can put, if you wanted bubbles, now granted at this scale, you're probably not gonna wanna put bubbles in there. Or if you wanna put like a, a damaged mech piece or a weapon or, or a tree stump or whatever, you can sink it into this stuff and it'll hold it just fine. This stuff dries like a, a normal glue would, so. All right, so once this dries, I will get to priming. I'm gonna prime these in gray and we will get on with how to paint these using uh, airbrush and various brush techniques and things like that. All right, so I've had the base primed. I've added a uh, brown wash over the cork to get all the recesses darkened. And then I've gone ahead and put some gray and some chocolate brown onto the surfaces and then dry brushed with a light gray. And that's what I've done with the base. This is just, you know, weathering rocks. It's just very basic and simple. It doesn't take very long to do. Uh, but since the point of this is to show how to do the chemical pools, I didn't want to spend any time on the base. So what I'm going to do now is start to airbrush a base coat of uh, Reaper Master Series Peacock Green. You can use any Kelly Green, Dark Green, um, that's, you know, Forest Green, anything. It's just we want to set a nice dark green base and we want a little bit of the overspray to get onto the edges. I've got a Iwata HPCS Eclipse airbrush. I'm going to add some uh, flow improver to the pot. Got a little, just a touch of water in there. I'm going to probably add a little more. Two or three drops is all you really need. Uh, anytime you're mixing paints that are, aren't meant for airbrushing, the flow improver definitely helps you prevent it from getting uh, clogging the needle or drying out too quickly. three or four drops of paint in there. This is much more than I'm really gonna need for just, just one base, but 
just want to show the process and then add a little bit of water. It's, it's, I usually add anywhere between half the uh, flow improver to the actual paint up to a one-to-one. -one. Then I'm just going to take a mixing brush and mix it all up. It's going to be nice and thin. I'll show you the consistency here in a second, but what I'm going to do next is what's called a backflow. I'm going to put my hand over the thing finger over the, the nozzle, pull down the air, and then slowly run air through the dual action trigger. And what that's going to do is mix that little the last bit of paint down at the bottom. I'm going to test the flow, and I can show you what it looks like here. You can see it's, it's fairly wet. Um, flow improver is a uh, retarder, but you definitely are better off working in lighter coats than in a heavy coat when it comes to the airbrush. So uh, I probably could have left a little bit thicker, but it's not going to hurt anything. So now all I'm doing is just aiming at the outer edge of the base. Thin layers of uh, paint. I got a little too much there, but that's okay. It'll uh, it'll even out because we're going to base coat the whole thing. And then what I'm doing as I slowly work the trigger back is kind of getting used to the paint. But I'm also doing just an initial like base, you know, uh, professional painters would call a tack coat. And you can see as it's nice and thin, it's already starting to, to flash off and dry. You can obviously speed that up if you keep air running on it. So as you can see, I'm just working up these layers, layer by layer. And this is great. If you're just learning how to airbrush, this is excellent practice for you to just get used to the trigger, how to work with thin paint, thin layers. It's it's really difficult to mess up. And you even actually want the overspray to show up on the, the edges here of the base because that's going to show like the, you know, the splashing and sloshing of the pools as it's ebbed and flowed or risen and fallen, you know, it's stained the rock. It's, it's really, this is a, you really can't mess this up uh, unless you just, you know, slather on the paint. So, and even if you do, you know, just let it dry, put another base coat on or reprime it and start over. It's not going to hurt anything. It's, you know, it's a piece of cork and a base. It's really easy to make a few of these and practice and get used to how your uh, airbrush works without having to put too much time and effort into, you know, maybe some expensive models or something that you put a lot of time putting together. So again, I would use this as an opportunity, especially if you're just starting out airbrushing to get used to how the airbrush uh, operates, the trigger, and uh, kind of get familiar with paint consistency and things like that, because that's really going to help you in the long run. Those are things you just can't, you can't read a book or watch a video and figure out. You kind of have to go by feel on that. So practice will definitely benefit you. I will caveat this, but normally I don't airbrush inside. I'm doing this just for the sake of these quick videos. Uh, I usually wear a, a dual respirator mask and uh, all of that, but because I'm doing the video with the microphone, I couldn't get it to not sound like I was uh, speaking through a cardboard box. So uh, just keep that in mind that you don't wanna do this indoors in a closed environment over and over and over again. It's not good for you, uh, even though it says non-toxic paints are 
uh, full of all sorts of things that you don't want to breathe into your lungs uh, over a long sustained period of time. So just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm fully aware of it and this is a very limited, I'm only doing this just for the sake of these quick videos here where I'm just putting some a few colors down and getting, getting you all to see how it works. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now I've got, essentially you can see, I've got a darkened base area where there's more green. Everything's still gonna dry. I can throw some more air on that to kind of expedite the process. Or you can just set it down and move on to another another model or a base if you're doing this, um, you know, in mass to make, you know, several at once. Another trick that uh, I like to use and I learned from a, a painter called Kenny Boucher. He has a video channel called Next Level Painting. Everything I know about, pretty much about everything I know about the airbrush, I learned from watching his video, his tutorials. So you should go check him out. I'll put a link to his uh, page uh, in the comment section. And uh, but uh, to get back to what I was mentioning, when you're done with your paint here, uh, this is a used one. But if you're going back and trying to do blends and different colors, you can take that pot and dump it out, and especially in like a water bottle cap bottle. I mean, people have tons of these lying around. It's it, they're cheap, obviously, since it came with a bottle you already drank. But uh, you, if you need to go back to a color, especially if you've mixed it, you can keep it here. And if you've put flow improver in it, then it's a retarder. So it will not just dry out right away. It's going to last quite a while. It's already thinned out. Um, you can add it back into another color if you want to blend up. Say we wanted to do a lighter green and uh, I wanted to have it not be quite so light, I could put some of this back into the pot. So lots of useful uh, things you can do. Uh, you don't just have to dump out the paint every single time you're done with a color. All right, so now I've uh, loaded up the airbrush with some game color dark green this is a uh, it's a you know a couple of shades lighter than the uh, dark green that we did earlier but uh, the reason for the first coat was kind of a, a base to kind of unify the dark wash and uh, the, the regular just primered area this is going to be more of the color that we want for the actual chemical pools I've used probably a little less uh, flow improver on this but uh, still pretty good amount of uh, thinning working my way from the outer edge kind of working it towards the the inner inner uh, recess areas not trying to be particularly careful or super precise just trying to get more of the a lighter green over that dark and it'll smooth out some of the uh, inconsistencies with the uh, color between the browns and the greens you don't need a whole lot. And if you want to try to keep it away from the very inner recess areas, go ahead and do that. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, it's such a slight color change though that it's really not necessary if you don't want to try to do that. But it's also something that if you're trying to work on your accuracy and your airbrush skills, then by all means, This is a color you can definitely see it changes as it dries. You can see the shade go from a kind of more of a, a brighter, robust green, and then it mutes out and it almost fades into the darker green that you have on there. So uh, you almost almost have to turn it to see the light effect, which is good because you want something so smooth and perceptible because we're gonna add a, a lighter green after this, which is gonna go up more towards the outer edge. That'll be a nice gradient and the eye will naturally see a uh, the illusion of you know scale all right now we get to use one of my favorite colors uh, of all time to paint with this is viejo game air scorpion green it's awesome i love it it works great for slime it works great for chemicals it's just a, a really good green it's good for uh you know things that you're trying to make look gross and disgusting uh, I haven't tried any sort of camouflage or anything that, like that with it, but uh, for these chemical bases, this is this is what you want. I haven't thinned it. I haven't added flow improver. I just straight out of the bottle. It's game air. 
uh, if, it, if you have a you know a good bottle it's fresh uh, hasn't dried out then you don't need to add anything but again you have to go with uh, what you understand about airbrush paints and if it's too thick you're gonna need to know to thin that uh, other thing you haven't seen me do I'll mention it now while uh, off camera is uh, I've been cleaning the tip because as I use a lot of air you get a little paint buildup on the very tip of the needle and what that does is disrupt the spray pattern then you get spattering and all sorts of things you don't want so I've been cleaning that uh, in addition to uh, you know flushing out the, uh, the airbrush and cleaning it out so just keep that in mind in order to keep everything running well so now we're gonna run this towards the outer edge and start to get a little bit of that chemicals uh, uh, pools kind of a depth you know is more green towards the middle maybe and if you want it to be more of a green lighter green in the uh, towards the edge then that's you know completely up to you I think it looks neat with the uh, the, the, the outer outer areas more of a yellow I think it really uh, stands out more and pops more but again go with whatever you feel you want to do Again, I'm using a lot of air, just a little bit of paint, and going in thin layers. And this, I'm definitely trying not to get too close to the uh, to the to the shoreline, if you will. Um, but I'm also not worried about letting the spray go in and get a little bit of overspray because that's going to cause a nice transition and a fade to, to make it look more uh, more like there's depth there. Don't try to get it to go super, super bright with this color because we're going to add uh, white and then do a yellow over it. It's really gonna tie a lot of this together. All right, so now in my pot, I've got some Viejo Game Color white, just regular old white. You could also use a like a very light beige or off-white. It's it's not really, it's the point isn't the color, the point is the what's called pre-highlight. So what we're gonna do is pick these, maybe these outer areas or anywhere that you wanna represent like a deeper, area this is no different than if you were doing blue water and you wanted a like an ocean area and you wanted the very darkest areas to represent the the depth so you would probably have that undercoated with you know more of a darker color and then maybe you did like a nice thin uh, blue over everything to kind of tie it together which is what we're going to do after this white with the yellow so i'm going to put some of this white paint on these outer edges and what it's going to do is cause that yellow to really pop in contrast to the areas that just have the green or the dark green. And it doesn't take a whole lot, but work, again, thin coats. If you want it to be, you know, a little bit brighter, let it dry, use some air, um, let it flash off and dry, and then put a little more. Try not to go past the dark green line. Try to leave some of that um, scorpion green in between the two. All right, so now it's time to add the yellow. Citadel makes a great yellow. Flash Kits yellow is pretty awesome. Uh, obviously this is air, so it's a lot thinner. I recommend this. If you're gonna airbrush yellow at all, I actually wholeheartedly recommend this air, this paint. It has performed very well no matter what, so uh, just take that into account. Uh, I've got some paint in the pot. This is actually mostly Flow Improver and water. It's probably about four to five drops of Flow Improver and water and I literally dip my brush into the paint and that's all the paint that's in here. It's, it's very, very thin. In fact, let me show you what we're looking at here. It is, it is like a wash, okay? And that's what you want. You don't want um, any opaqueness on this just because you're not trying to do that. You're just basically, we're gonna overcoat onto what we've done already. We've done all the work with the airbrush, so now we're going to tie it all together. Um, if you were to look closely, I got a little bit of speckling with the white. And what that means is that my white wasn't quite thin enough. Uh, we're going to see if this yellow kind of blends some of that in and you end up losing the, uh, the speckling. You don't see it. Hopefully that's the case. Otherwise, I'll have to go back with the scorpion green and then build back up the white and do the yellow. It's not a lost cause. It's just, it's just more work. But uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, and that's not just with white. It's any color. If you get speckling, um, check the make sure your the, the needle, the tip is clean. And then take a look at your paint thickness and consistency and see if it's if it looks a little thick you probably need to add some at, at the very least a little bit of water so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start further back because I don't want to get up close and have this puddle 
um, because it is super, super thin. So I'm gonna start with air and I'm gonna literally just try to barely pull the trigger and get a little bit. And in fact, I'm gonna practice on my glove just to see how much, how little trigger pressure I need. And there we go. You can see it start to build up already. And that's where I'm gonna start. I don't want, I don't wanna just puddle it all up. Mostly air, working very, very thin. Not even really trying to get a, uh, an even coat. I'm just putting some yellow down. If there's a time to be patient, this is the time to do it. Don't rush this part. Sorry, it washes out with the light there, but the yellow is coming together. Give it a look, let it dry. All right, so now you can use more air, but you can definitely uh, let this sit and dry because now we're gonna move on to adding the uh, water effects. There is just a, a very slight bit of minor, minor speckling here, but I think once the clear coat's on there, you really won't notice the, the tie-in between the two colors, or three. All right, now it's time to add the water effects. Got some uh, secret weapon realistic water effects here. Uh, while I was waiting for the yellow to dry, I added some oily steel and some typhus corrosion and some Rizzo Rust onto the uh, pipe there just to kind of make it look contrast and show up like it's there. But uh, don't shake this up. I've got an old synthetic brush that I use for projects like this. What we're gonna do is get a nice thin initial coat. We're gonna do at least two, sometimes I do three. Uh, try to avoid pouring right from the dropper. Uh, as you squeeze the bottle, it you know wants to uh, suck air back in and you end up with bubbles and things like that. And you gotta kind of dab at them to get them out. If that's the case, it's fine. Just clean most of the um, water effect off your brush and then go back and dab to get those bubbles out. If you have a brush full of the water effect, it's kind of a futile process, so. Uh, but anyway. I'm going to just use the brush as a capillary type of uh, wick here to spread the water effect. As I'm doing that, I'm 
making a line across the outer edge. I'm not trying to make it super thick because I know I'm going to do more than one layer. And this is uh, this stuff is self-leveling, so if you have any unevenness, it's going to help mitigate a lot of it. It's not it's not a filler though, so don't think it's going to fill a bunch of little gaps and and uh, recessed areas. So you want it to have it you know mostly mostly smooth if you want it to be still still water style or still chemicals. Uh, work in small sections because it, it, it is uh, air dry but it does start to dry relatively quickly where it's the thinnest which is out towards the edges so uh, and it becomes kind of um, tacky and gooey so if you keep working it you're gonna end up with gooey little waves and things like that. you don't want that so just uh, you know work in, work in small sections don't uh, do part of it and then walk away or get distracted and come back um, it is pretty forgiving though if you miss a spot or whatever obviously you can just you know do another layer but just keep that in mind that it's not uh, it doesn't take as long to cure as the rippling or the uh, like more of a what is it uh, rapids type water and those water effects that have more of a paste making sure it gets up into the little close-up shoreline areas there because I want those to have a nice green glow. These last little transitions here. All right, and as you can see by the reflection in the light, I'm not going to pick it up and move it because I don't want it to, to sag from one side to the other, but it's going to look really, really wet. Uh, very, very frequently when I do just one layer, this whole surface here, as it dries, it's going to pick up on some of the the surface variation underneath, and it's going to dry uneven. Don't worry about it. You're going to do two coats anyway, at least, um, it's often three. So that that next coat won't need to be um, as thick. But again, you want to do the same thing. Put it on relatively quickly, um, and then you know just make sure you get all the the surface smoothed out, uh, and then let it dry. And that second layer will absolutely be smoother than the first layer. Now that the first layer has dried. It's hard to see in the camera because of the glare with the light, but the first layer has an orange peel texture to it. It's it's very slight, and you, you kind of have to look at it, but you'll see there'll be areas that are smooth and some areas that are slight. You can also sometimes get these little, look like creases or ruts. Um, it's, it's no big deal because as soon as you put another coat of this on there, it's gonna fill all that in, and there won't be any variation between the two, and it'll look, it'll look a lot better. So I'm gonna apply the second coat, and then I'm going to edge the entire base in black to set the contrast, and this base will be finished. So there you go. All done. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Camel Specs Online at Facebook, and give us a subscribe here on YouTube. Check us out for more videos. Leave some questions or comments in the areas below. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you'd like to see. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.